All right, so this is just another video of me getting my thoughts out because I can go into all kinds of forums on, well, pretty much anywhere and type and type and it'll be too long to read. Too long did not read. Amazing way, this is more so for me and I mean, whoever watches this, hey, hope you enjoy it too. If no one watched it, whatever. The League seems like I don't, I don't know what's going on with the bigs in the NBA right now particularly our American bigs we don't seem to have a lot of them the future of American bigs in the NBA is looking pretty bleak right now even when you look at the draft coming up he's not like a traditional big by any means but Wimbiana is French he's over 7 feet tall but he's French Jokic, Nurk, Sabanis the league all through and through, we have so many of our best bigs being international players, which is great for those other countries. But when it comes time for the Olympics or, you know, the FIBA World Cup, that's gonna put America in the tough spot. Right now we have Bam Adebayo and we have a few others, but the future is looking like Evan Mobley. And I really gotta think about who else. Evan Mobley. I, I'm not sure about Paolo. I'm not sure. I, I think he's American, but I've been wrong before. I used to think that Ben Simmons was American, then I found out he's from Australia. And I used to think Kyrie Irving was American, then I found out he was from Australia too. So as to where players in the league are actually from, that's uh, something I really got to look into. But a big that is not getting the shine he should be getting is someone I've talked about before. Luca Garza. He has several games in Detroit where when he was given like good minutes, like starter quality minutes, he played like a starter. He had three games where he had good minutes and he put up 20 points in every one of them. Had a double-double in almost all three of them. I mean, that, that should say something, right? That was as a rookie. Then you look at, uh, look at his current season with the Minnesota Timberwolves. He just had a great game against the Portland Trailblazers. And it wasn't his first great game of the season. He's had several of them. He's had several of them. Matter of fact, last season, he averaged 5.8 points on 44% shooting in about 12 minutes per game in Detroit. So far in Minnesota, in 11 games, in only 6.7 minutes, He's averaging 5.1 points. It's almost the same amount of points in about half the time. On 57.6% shooting. And if you watch his gameplay, it's not all in the paint. He does it from in the paint, mid-range, three. And he's pretty good from the free throw line. Pretty good. Not amazing. Not terrible. Pretty good. Ugh, I don't know. He's young. He's becoming more mobile. Like you can see his, his uh, athleticism is getting better. He dropped mad weight between college and coming to the Pistons. And now you can see him getting used to his weight. He's moving more fluid. He's moving faster. He's got more bounce in his stuff. The dude is going to be a monster. He is going to be dangerous in the future. And far too few are paying attention. And he could be good for our Olympic team someday. A lot of people call me crazy about that, but I mean, look at the, the, the footage. When he gets half decent minutes, he plays well above what people give him credit for. Even on his defensive end. Jeremy Grant is one of my favorite players in the league. And I watched him position himself right in front of Grant when Grant's about to go to the rim. Grant is good at finishing at the rim. And when Garza got in front of him, he passed right out of that mess. I mean, he doesn't make a bunch of blocks and steals per game, but he plays defense. And he's better this year than he was last year. He's only in the second year, his second season. He's underused. And he's one of a few players I think are underused. 
You got him, you got Hamado Diallo. I just made a comment about this other day. When he plays 28 minutes or more, is he going to give you 20 plus points or maybe even 30 plus points? He did it last season several times. Over like an eight game stretch where he played 28 minutes or more, he had two or three performances where he went above 30 points and several where he went above 20. And on top of that, he had multiple games where he had, you know, five steals or three steals. Multiple games in that same stretch of games. He's underutilized and undervalued. Hamano Diallo. But back to Luka Garza. I mean, he's been on three teams already within two years. Detroit, which we gave up on him way too early. We should have kept him, but whatever, right? Uh... Then he moves on to Portland for the summer summer league. Balls out. But they don't keep him. And then he ends up getting signed by the Minnesota Timberwolves. Destroying the G League. And in the few games he's gotten so far, he's been playing good. Playing good. Let's actually look at the stats a little bit. Let's see here. Uh, Ooh, okay. What the? Whoops, wrong season. <laughs> I pulled the stats for Detroit. Let's pull the stats for this season. I'm looking like, oh, yeah, 20 points? I don't, I don't remember doing that. But this season, he just had 14 against Portland in 12 minutes on 5 for 5 shooting, 1 for 1 from the 3, 3 for 4 from the free throw line. And he had a couple of rebounds in the mix. And uh, that's the game where he played solid defense against people like Jeremy Grant and uh, rookie Jabari Walker and whatnot. He put a mad spin move on Shaden Sharp. A mad move on, spin, uh, on Shaden Sharp. It just doesn't make sense why he doesn't get more playing time. And right now, the Portland Trailblazers is actually could really use him on that bench because they do not have enough. That bench is empty when you look at it. You got a young Shaden Sharp who's decent, who's going to be nice. He's decent right now. Uh, I think they're playing Nas on on the bench to try to run that second unit because they need you know they need people down there. You can't just have a solid starting five and then no bench because then you're going to lose game after game every time the starting five has to come off the court. But he could give them the offensive firepower they need off that bench to secure games. But Minnesota's not playing no more. Because they gave up everything to get Rudy Gobert. And if you got a second year player like Luka Garza coming off the bench, looking really good, looking better than Rudy is, when you gave up all those draft picks and players, for them, that's going to make your organization look like a laughing stock. That you gave up all this for this veteran big, when you had somebody on the team who costs far less. He's on, I don't know if he's on a two-way contract, but they finally gave him like a better deal or what. When you have this much cheaper player, much younger, looking as good as he is, if you play Garza 20 minutes a game and he starts looking really good every time, you, you gotta say it face some kind of way. You gotta say it for some kind of way, because Rudy Gobert was not worth what they gave up for him. All the frustration that Donovan Mitchell was having, people are starting to see it now. They're starting to understand it, because D-Mitch is killing it. Spider is killing it in Cleveland. While Gobert is not killing it in Minnesota. He's not. Whatever team Luca lands on, whether he, he ends up staying long term in Minnesota or in the, somewhere else. That team's gonna have a gold mine. That's it.